you're in season 12 now. And we're returning. in season 12, yes. How, now, how did you end up on that show? How did that, you've been on the show longer than anyone on the show, right? Yeah, and it's funny because I'm the youngest person on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the show was on for about a year, a season. This is going about 12, 13 years ago. It was on, and it was a different format. It was tons of brokers, and it, was, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't focused on, like, three young agents. So I came in, and they interviewed me. Um, I called them. I said, hey, you know, I, the show is on. It's great, but, you know, I think we could make this a little bit better, and I'm really tapped in the market. So they took a video of me, and they sent it to Andy Cohen in New York, and that was on the show. You were 21 years old when you started on the show? Or? I was, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's, that seems almost, uh, are there many 21 no. year old real estate agents? I was licensed when I was 19. That's yeah. the thing. Actually, no, 18 actually. Yeah. Uh, or I think 18 or 19, but I was still in high school, believe it or not. Yeah. I, I think I read that somewhere that you were in high school when you started. Yeah. So you were, you know, selling houses to your teachers or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that crazy? Yeah. Not to my teachers, but, uh, because uh, that would have been weird. <laughs> now, now uh, you, you grew up in L.A.? Is, 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 yes. Is, is this sort of a, um, you know, does that give you a leg up when you're trying to get into the market here? You know people? I or? mean, of course it doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. it is, but, you know, there's a lot of people I know that I went to school with, high school, that it's like when you see people driving around in their license plate and it says Duke University on it, mm -hmm. and they're horrible drivers and you don't know what they do with their life. It's like a lot of people focus on... Um, what school did you go to, college, whatever. And there's a lot of people I know that had a lot of hands, you know, uh, legs up or whatever, the, you know, had a lot of opportunities because of their families and whatnot, but they don't do anything with their life. So you've got to have kind of a drive and you've got to be able to figure out how to um, really navigate and, and do something. So when you're 18 years old, do you remember your first big sale? Yeah, I knocked on a door actually. And rang the bell, and out came this guy named Dennis Woodruff. I don't know if you remember. Whoa. Yeah, remember him? Yeah, you drive around in the cars. Drive around in the cars. Struggling and actor. Struggling actor would hand out your uh, uh -huh. his uh, tapes or anyone who'd watched like his movies, which were awful. But uh -huh. and he comes out, and I'm like, uh, you're that guy who drives around and hangs out coffee bean at Sunset Plaza. He's like, yeah. I was like, what are you doing here? He's like, oh, my friend owns this house, and his mom just passed away. I was like, okay. Uh, are you? Do you think they're going to sell it? He's like, yeah, he's actually going to, you know, interview some real estate agents. That was it. Wow, I was not expecting Dennis Woodruff. I was be. not either. <laughs> <laughs> it was the last person I expected. Yeah. So right now in Los Angeles, what's going on with the market? Is it a good time to buy to sell? It's a great time to buy right now. Yeah. You know, the thing is, the market hasn't like tanked or anything, but it has softened, and that's actually a good thing because like it was getting insane. Like nobody could afford to buy the houses at that point. You know, so it really needed to chill out. And now there's two kinds of sellers. There's sellers that um, are still in denial and think that the market is, you know, amazing and whatnot. It's good. It's fine. But you've got to price your house to sell it, to get multiple offers, because that's the only way. And when you do that, you usually get more than it's uh, worth, because, you know, I just sold a house for eight million bucks. This is a great story. Six-day close. My buyers come. I don't represent the house. I represent the client. There's an open house, and um, the uh, client says to me, I want this house. I go, fantastic, we're going to write an offer. And he goes, yeah, but I, I don't want it to be outbid. I, I, I don't want someone else to get it. What do I need to do? I go, I mean, they're going to review all offers. They're going to respond to everyone. They go, no, we can't have them respond to anybody. I go, okay, if you really want it this bad, write your clothes in six days, all cash, let them stay in the house for three months free afterwards, give them full price, and do uh, no inspections, no contingencies. Usually I would never recommend no contingencies. What if the house is you know, on an ancient Indian burial ground? What if there's a murder? There's so many things that you need to inspect a house ahead sure. of time. But this is in the flats of Beverly Hills. Like, the land value was $8 million, so we close, and everyone's like, what? This is the fastest escrow. And I get a, I get a call the next day, and my client goes, um, I have to talk to you. I go, uh oh, did I do something wrong? And he goes, no, 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 not at all. Um, can we can we meet up? And I go, sure, um, like 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, whatever. They're like, yeah. So I, I was like, hey, well, why don't we just get sushi? Let's go get dinner. Sit down. They're like, we changed our mind. We don't want it anymore. <laughs> I go, you couldn't have thought about that before we closed escrow? So they go, no. They go, but we have another house that we really, really want, and we want to make an offer on that one. And I go, okay, so what do you want me to do about this house? They go, can you put it back on the market and sell it? So I put it in escrow again yesterday. Wow. But the cool thing is it's for a half a million dollars more. Uh -huh. So the mistake actually made him a little bit of money. So you sell it twice in I a month. I sell it twice. You get to commission it twice, right? Twice. That's yeah. This is the cool thing <laughs> on that house. But then I also get I get it on the buy side, the sell side. 
the buy side of the new house, mm -hmm. and then get this one. They have a house in Bel Air that's going to be $20 million. I'm going to have to sell that. So literally, I did like a $45 million transaction. From, and this is somebody I met like a couple months ago at the coffee shop. <laughs> that's, that's, a good, that's a good trip to the coffee shop. That paid for my coffee. Wow, absolutely. Want. So and now, how did you, when you got into the TV show, did you know you were going to be good at that? Yes, because... I don't act or do anything different on the show than I do in normal life. Like, what you see is what you get. This is who I am on the show. This is who I am in real life. So, you know, I, I can't say that everybody likes it, but you could. I could definitely say that uh, it's uh, whether you want to like it or not, it's good. It's interesting TV to watch. It's it really funny. The show is really funny, good, too. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you find it invasive sometimes when you yeah. have the cameras on your life 24 no, hours a day? Or? I could care less. I like it. It's fun. Yeah? Yeah. Is there any time you've ever just say, oh, shut the camera off, I don't want to... Yeah, but they don't listen, because yeah. that's when you know there's going to be drama or something. So I they saw sit. you were arguing with your husband about the new house purchase. Oh, I really wanted to get that. They wouldn't yeah. do it. I was like, guys, drop the cameras, and they just don't listen, because, they, well, they might feel uncomfortable, but they that's their job, you know? There's, a, there's big rivalries between the different realtors and in, in the show. Yeah. Is, is that a normal thing in other markets, or is that an L.A.? That's... That's oh, an LA thing. I think that's whether you're in Kansas or yeah. Los Angeles, that's a normal thing. But the stakes are just so high here, right? The stakes are so high, yes. Yeah. yeah. Who, is, is there a, a, a main chief rival that you have in real estate in LA? Not really, honestly. Like, you know, 10 of us do 99% of the business. Like, the high, like I, I always say 1% of us do 99% of like the really big transactions. So we have to all play fair and play nice, of course. You know, I go on a listing, I don't get one. If somebody else goes on a listing, they get it. And it's just luck of the draw. So with because of the show, do people come and they want to sell their house so they can be on the show too? Does that happen a lot? Does Not generally. People call me uh, <laughs> and I say, hey, by the way, do you want to film this? And they're either like, no way. Or they're like, sure, that sounds like fun. People yeah, don't generally call me to be on the show. It never sort of blows a deal like, oh, you're in the middle of selling something. Oh, by the way, there's going to be cameras here filming you selling your No, business. because they would know ahead of time, yeah, and I would yeah. say, this is what's going to happen, and they'll say, okay, we're down. We'll, we'll, we'll film this. We like this. This sounds fun. The, the houses in Los Angeles can are mass, huge, hugely priced houses, right? You were saying the highest price house in L.A. is $250 million right now? The highest price house right now, as of uh, last week, is two hundred fifty million. Parencio's house was; it was at three hundred fifty million, but then they dropped it. Eventually, got down to one hundred ninety-five million. So, two hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah. What does that house come with? Uh, and, uh, a couple bathrooms. A couple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's actually. I know this sounds weird. It's, it's a great deal if oh. you have two hundred fifty million to spend on a house. To spend two hundred fifty million on a house. You're not buying that. If you were, if you're worth 300 million, you're not buying a 250 million house. You don't have to just have the 250. You have to legitimately be worth 50, 60 times that amount of money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if there's how many of those people in the world are there? Uh, actually, quite a lot. It didn't used to be that way, did it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It seems like everyone just keeps getting wealthier and wealthier. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting time, isn't it? There's, it, you you must meet some uh, amazing people, and when you're in the ones place. I work with, the the billionaires I work with, I always find to be the the most eccentric, strange people. Yeah, I it's just, it's never floors. I mean, it's just they're very strange people. So outside of the two hundred and fifty million dollar house, do you have any advice for a, a first time home buyer? Sure. Um, well, this is a great time to buy. What I would say now is, let's just say, there's. You like a couple houses on the market, two, three, whatever. Put offers on all of them and see which one you get the best deal on. You know, you have leverage when you're not like emotionally attached to one property and the seller doesn't have you by the balls. You know. Uh huh. Uh huh. So you have pick three that you like for. Just throw in some lowball offers to see what happens. One of them's going to take. Interesting. Yeah, because that ends, 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 ends up being what happens a lot, right? You fall in love with the. Well, I'm not saying buy something just because, you know, uh, you can get a better deal on it. But if you're not emotionally invested in it, that, that's, a, that's a great way to do it. If you just fall in love and you have to have that house, look, I tell this to everybody. Up market, down market, it doesn't matter. Real estate always goes up. It might go down, up like this, whatever. So if you're going to spend 20 years in a house, regardless, it's still going to be worth twice as much. And then, so what's the difference if you if you if you spend 100 grand or 100 less uh, on your dream home? Just buy it if you can afford it. Always buy the most that you can afford, and 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 the, buy what you love that you can afford. But don't nickel and dime. It's just not important. So you wouldn't advise anyone buy a house if they're not going to stay there 20 years? No. Let's call it even 10 years. Cycles yeah. are seven years. Up, down, up, down, generally. They say with the speed of technology and the Internet today, it's about five years. But, um, you know, 
if you're staying there for 10 years, you're going to make money regardless. Are the political situation in this country, is the upcoming election, does that affect... Election market. years are, yes, and, and, and that's going to be a problem this year because the market is already softening. So what happens when you have an election year um, is the market always just, everything gets really, really cold and like people don't know what to do. That's even in the highest markets. So what I'm nervous about is when that happens, coupled with a little bit of slowing, it's going to look like, uh, you know, like World War III. Not that bad, but I'm saying people are going to be a little bit... Might worse. actually be World War III. Let's hope not. Know. If you were to invest your money right now in any part of the world outside of Los Angeles, where would you do that? Outside of L.A.? Look, you can't give anything away in New York right now. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that throwing offers left and right, you're going to, you can pick these things up. So, which, which is so crazy because, you know, it's one of the top destinations in the world. But, yeah, buy something in New York. It's going to go up. Never miss a beat. Subscribe to Larry King now and watch new episodes every day.